Welcome to another episode of Jay Law's Garage. We're here once again with Neil Macon, the famous automotive curmudgeon and editor of uh, Skin Knuckles magazine. Uh, you know, this is a magazine for guys that are doing stuff economically, for the home it's hobbyist, for the guy that uh, likes to do it himself. Do it yourself. And something we like to do on this website, we like to promote American-made products, made by Americans, here in America, and especially ones like this. This is John Walton. John is a law professor by trade, but he's a car enthusiast, and he has invented something in his garage. He manufactures it here in America. He sells them here in America, and we thought we'd help him promote it a little bit. I think it's a great idea. Tell us what you have here, John. Okay. Well, Jay, with unibody cars, if you put a jack in the place where the manufacturer said put the jack here and jack the car up, if mm -hmm. you want to put it on a jack stand, which is what you should do, you got to find some place else on the car to put the jack stand. Right. Or you have to jack the car up in the wrong place. Right. And the majority of jack stand failures happen when the car falls off the jack stand. Right. So I invented a jack stand that allows you to put the jack at the place where the manufacturer says to jack up the car. Right. And you have different pads that vary according to the different kind of car. So if you had a Corvette or a Porsche, they have a flat surface with a hole in the middle, the pin right. goes up into the hole in the chassis. I see, okay, right if here. If you've got, yeah. yeah, if you've got a pinch weld, the pinch weld fits down in here. Different kinds of cars, the pad can be modified for the different jacking location on the car. This would be for a pinch weld. A lot of the, the new Mustangs, Camaros, they right. have those finish panels, the plastic panels that come underneath the rocker. Right. So we needed something with a smaller profile so it would clear that plastic panel. So this is pinch weld for that. This would be a regular pinch weld. This pad can actually be used a couple different ways. You can use it with a pinch weld or you can also put a pin in it and use it on a, a, a Porsche oh. or a... Um, and you get another inch of height. Really clever. You line the pad up underneath the car on the factory jacking location. You jack the car up. Right. You would then slide this underneath the car, line it up underneath, and then, and then lower then it down on the... Lower it down. Oh, very cool. Pull the jack out, and now the car is sitting on the same place where you jacked it up. Because of the fact that this is locked into the chassis, and the cap actually locks over the top. Right. Once the jack stand is loaded up, you actually can't get the car off the jack stand without lifting it back up. Gotcha. So you never have to worry about the car slipping or falling off the jack stand. Wow. It's got a nice wide base. Other things that we've done, I invented these or thought about these at the track. You may know if you're jacking a car up on a paddock road, sometimes the wheels don't want to roll if the jack doesn't relocate underneath the car, the car can creep and fall off gotcha. the edge of the jack. So what we did, this actually fits so that yeah. when everything is locked together, the only thing that can move is either the jack or you pull the car. Oh, cool. And being a law professor, you know about being sued. So, <laughs> so you know how to protect yourself. I'm fascinated by the process. So you invent this and what, you apply for a patent? Yes. And how long did that take? Because there are a lot of guys that come up with great ideas and tools, and they have no idea. The USPTO um, has a, a process called a provisional patent application, and you can go on the website, you can do a, re, uh, a search of patents for free right. on the website. You can fill out a provisional patent application, which gives you a year of protection so that you can disclose right. the invention to other people and do your marketing and whatnot. And then you file a final patent application um, within a year of the provisional. But the provisional basically allows you to say what your invention is in plain English. Now let me, here's a question for you, because I see these ads all the time. Hey inventors, call us, send us your invention. <laughs> we'll put, are those pretty not a good idea? Are those pretty phony? You know, I wouldn't say they're phony. Because okay. um, you're a lawyer, he won't say they're phony. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say, and, and there are a lot of them that will assist you as a general rule you have to read the disclosures right. and a lot of the disclosures will say only three percent of the people who yeah. bring us inventions ever make any money on it and you have to assign a certain percentage of your rights but it's to easy that. enough to do yourself is sure. what you're saying okay sure. well this is really so what do you do so you come up with this and then you find what a foundry that'll make these for you yeah these are made at trio foundry in montgomery illinois john was telling me that the owners of the foundry have an old car history yeah yeah um, the, the Rayfields, the original Rayfield car, their grandfather 
Um, the Rayfield carburetor may oh, be familiar. Okay, okay. Rayfield okay. battery. Sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. I yeah. know that name. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Remember the that Rayfield name. carburetor. So these guys are kind of old car enthusiasts in their own right. Now, and are they all uniform height? They are uniform height, but if you wanted more height, well, some of the pads are different height. Right. And then the other thing is, is that this is a pad that is recessed. Some guys already have pads for their car, mm -hmm. so they can set that pad on top of here and keep it located, or this is set up so that gotcha. they can also be stacked, so that you can get more height. The interesting thing is, is that because of the geometry, generally when you're jacking up a car and looking for a place to put the jack stand, you're somewhere up underneath the suspension. Right. Well, this goes back behind the wheels at the jacking point, so the geometry gives you much more height than this, even though you've only got 12 inches right. here. At the front of the car, you've got closer to 22. Cool, so if I wanted to order a set of these for you, I would tell you, I have a Corvette, I have a 911, you would send me the pads that go with it, or do all the whole set of pads come with it? Um, the jack stands come in pairs with one set of pads, and I then you can buy other pads separately if sure, you have sure. different kinds of and cars. And what, what, what does one of these go for? Um, a pair of them sells for two ninety nine. Two ninety nine, very cool. And they get that from you on your website, right? Yes. Cool, yes. very good. So. And what was your time from invention to on the market? How long was it? A couple of years? Um, I thought of this in, uh, at Road America in 07. Okay. And basically came out with it in 08. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and, and we, uh, we started, you know, they, I prototyped them a few times. The prototypes were done in steel. Yeah. And, um, and then I, I found a foundry and a pattern maker, and, you know, we had to run um, final element analysis. We did a computer model of this right. and then physically tested them to make sure that they, you know, they hold the kind of, of weight cool. that they're supposed to. Well, John, congratulations. Thank you. Thank it's you very great. much, Like Jim. I say, we like to help. American inventors, so many guys out there that come up with tools or ideas like this, and it's such a simple idea, and it took a law professor to do it. So very good, <laughs> very cool. Well, I'm, I'm very those impressed. those are yours. Oh, oh, well, thank you very much. I'm gonna put these on my, uh, my 356 bar. We'll see how they work.